In this video, we'll be looking at three statistical parameters. Let's start with range, move on to median, and then finally end the video with mode. Let's get started with the definition of range. How is range defined? Range is defined as a difference between the largest and the smallest value in a data set. Let's get a handle about this definition with a very simple example. Here is the example. We need to compute the range for these five numbers. The definition of range is the difference between the largest and the smallest number. Step one, let's identify the largest number. Step two, let's identify the smallest number. And then let's compute the difference. Largest number in this data set is a 142. The smallest value among these observations is a 5. So the difference between 142 and 5, 137 is the range for this set of numbers. It's like walk in the park. It's a very simple thing. What we'll do is, as we are at it, let's quickly look at what does a range signify? What is the application of range? Range basically is an estimate, it's an indication of the statistical dispersion of the observations in a set of data. What does it mean in plain simple English? If the dispersion is higher, essentially the numbers are far and wide distributed. If the dispersion is lesser, then the numbers are closer to each other. So the range is more, the dispersion is higher, the numbers will be far and wide distributed. If the range is lesser, the numbers will be closer to each other and therefore the dispersion is also going to be lesser. Let's look at two examples to understand this and then see how this could come in a question in GRE. Let's get started with this. What is the average and range for these five numbers? Whenever you read a question and you see a set of numbers, always be switched on. Look to see if you can check something and get some inference about the set of numbers. These numbers are 1, 8, 15, 22 and 29. A quick look tells us these numbers are in an arithmetic progression. If you spot that they are in an AP, Note this, for an arithmetic progression, when numbers are written in an ascending order, the middle number is the average. If you knew that computing the average is basically identifying this number 15 and saying that the average is equal to 15. Else, you need to add 1 plus 8 is a 9, 9 plus 15 24, 24 plus 22 is a 46, 46 plus 29 is a 75 by 5 15. That's going to take you 15 seconds compared to this taking no time at all. So always be switched on when you're looking at numbers. Part 2, we need to compute the range. Range is the largest number minus the smallest number. Largest number is 29, smallest number is 1. So the range for the set of data is equal to 28. So we found out the average, we computed the range. Let's do it for another example. This time we have a different set of numbers, 5 numbers. Are these numbers in an AP? You spotted it, good. These are in an AP, the common difference here is 1. They are written in an ascending order. The middle number is the average. So the average for this data set is a 15. The average for the first set of data was also a 15. For this is also a 15. Let's compute the range in this case. The range in this case is a 17 minus 13, which is equal to 4. So let's draw these inferences based on the result. First one is the average for both these numbers is the same. The range for the first set is 28, which is much larger than the range for the second set, which is a 4. Which essentially means that the elements in the first set of data are dispersed more than the elements in the second set of data. Let's just look at it. The first set of data started with a 1, ended with a 29. Second set started only with a, started with a 13 and ended with a 17. So dispersion here is only so much, whereas for the first set of data, it's much larger. So greater the range, larger the dispersion. You could get some good comparison questions. They could essentially say that there are two sets of data and they'll say that the average for both these sets is the same. And then they'll say that the range of the first set is more than the range of the second set. All of this is given. Column A would essentially tell you that the largest number in set one and column B will tell you the largest number in set two. Both these sets have the same average. The range for the first set is more than the range for the second set, which essentially means that the dispersion for the first set is greater than the dispersion for the second set. Obviously pointing to the fact that the largest number in set A is going to be greater than the largest number in set B. And therefore we can say that A is greater than B or choice A is the answer. So knowing these little things will help you crack comparison questions a lot more efficiently. Having done range, let's move on to median. What is the definition of median? Median is an indication, is a measure of the central tendency for a set of data. Having done the definition, let's look at how to compute median. Computing median is slightly different for two scenarios. Scenario one, if you had odd number of observations in a set of data. Write the numbers in an ascending order, that's step number one. Pick the middle value having done that, that's going to give you the median. 
let's look at a very simple example and then consolidate this definition there are five numbers in this observation right 1 2 3 4 five so we have odd number of observations all that we need to do is write these numbers in an ascending order let's do that 13 followed by 34 and then a 48 76 and 172 The middle number, if you have five observations, is the third number from the left. So, forty-eight is the median for this set of data. What if we had even number of numbers? If we had even number of numbers, the first step: write those numbers in ascending order. No change as far as this goes. The only thing is, you'll pick the middle two values and compute their average to find out the median for those set of numbers. Let's again look at an example to get a good handle on this. We have now one, two, three, four, five. We have even number of observations. Step one: Let's write these numbers in an ascending order. Starts with a thirteen, moves on to a thirty-four, forty-eight, seventy-six, ninety-four, and one hundred and seventy-two. The middle two numbers are forty-eight and seventy-six. The arithmetic mean of forty-eight and seventy-six. Forty-eight plus seventy-six by two. This is a hundred and twenty-four by two, which is equal to sixty-two. So median is sixty-two for this set of data. If you have even number of observations, none of the numbers in this observation is going to be a median unless these two numbers ended up being a 62 themselves. Right? Let's move on from here. We found out how to compute the median. If there are odd number of observations, there are even number of observations. Now let's check out what if we have a large data set, something like we are talking about the population of a country. In that case, the 50th percentile value will give you the median. For example, if someone is saying that the median salary or median income of a household in a country is ten thousand dollars, what does it signify? It says that less than the median or equal to the median, you will have half the observations, which means half the population in this country is earning less than or equal to ten thousand dollars, and the other half has got a value which is more than or equal to the median. In this example, half the population earns an income which is ten thousand dollars or more. So median for a large population set essentially gives you the 50th percentile value. We have a couple of results about median, very interesting ones. If you add an equal number of observations to either side of the median, the median will remain unchanged. Let's go with the first example that we did for median. These are the five numbers. We have written them in ascending order. The median is a 48. Now let's add two numbers to the left and let's add two observations to the right. We are adding equal number of observations. Let's say we have added a seven and twenty-one to the left of forty-eight, fifty-nine and ninety-two to the right of forty-eight. So equal number of observations. We started with five, we added four more. So now we have nine observations with us. The middle number, and written in ascending order, will be the fifth number from left. Let's count that. We have written these numbers in ascending order. Fifth number would be one, two, three, four, five is basically forty-eight. The median to start with was forty-eight. the median after adding four numbers two to the left two to the right is still a 48 so if you add an equal number of observations to either side of the median median will remain unchanged what if that is not the case if you added more to either the left or to the right the side that you are adding more is the side to which the median is going to move towards let's look at an example i'll read the statement first we'll look at an example subsequently if more observations are added to the left of the median the median shifts to the left And vice versa. Let's start with the same example: thirteen, thirty-four, forty-eight, seventy-six, and one seventy-two. In ascending order, we have written them. So forty-eight is the median. This time, let me add one observation to the left of forty-eight and three to the right of forty-eight. So I've added one to the left of forty-eight, which is a thirty-nine. The three numbers which are more than forty-eight are fifty-nine, eighty-four, and one twenty-six. Now let's compute the median. We started with five numbers. We added four more observations. So now we have nine observations with us. The middle number is the fifth one from the left. One, two, three, four, five. The fifth number happens to be a fifty-nine. We added more to the right. Therefore, the median shifted to the right of forty-eight. So quickly again, if you add equal number of observations to either side of the median, the median remains unchanged. If you have more observations to either side, either to the left or to the right, whichever side you are adding more observations, the median will shift to that side. So move on from here. Look at the next parameter, which is mode. Mode, by definition, is the most frequently occurring observation in a set of data. It's the most popular one. It's the one with the highest frequency. Let's look at a few examples to understand mode. In this example: six is the number that appears with the maximum frequency. It's the most popular one. 
six appears thrice all other numbers five two and seven appear only once so six is the mode for this set of data let's make some tweaks to this and understand what will be the mode in those cases look at this example we have six five six two seven four two six two let's count the numbers that appear more than once six appears twice two also appears twice so both these numbers are the ones which appear with the highest frequency of three does it mean that we don't have a mode or will we say that both two and six are mode we'll say that both two and six are mode the modes for the set of data are both two and six whichever numbers appear with the maximum frequency all of those will become modes because you have two modes in this it's called a bimodal data set let's look at one more example what if this is our data set six appears twice seven appears twice so does two all of these numbers are appearing more than once all of them are appearing equal number of times and all of them are appearing with the maximum frequency that is found in this data set what do we say does this data set have any mode or does it not have any mode it has modes all these numbers 2 6 and 7 are modes for it it has more than one mode it has three modes so it's called trimodal if we had more observations and let's say we have eight observations all of them appear with the maximum frequency let's say each one appears twice and if they appear more than once which is a crucial thing then all of them will be modes and that will be called a multimodal set of data when will we say a data set does not have a mode is that such a situation possible at all certainly yes if there is no element which occurs more than more than once then that data set is called one which has got no mode in other words if all observations are distinct then we'll say that data set has got no mode so if you read in a question that this set of observations have no mode then we are talking about all observations in that being distinct quick recap what is mode mode is described as a measure of the most popular option in a data set quick half a minute recap about all three parameters what is range range is the difference between the largest and the smallest number it measures the extent of dispersion of observations in a data set what is median median measures the central tendency how do you compute median two scenarios one if you have odd number of observations write them in an ascending order the middle number is going to be the median if you have even number of observations write them in an ascending order no change there pick the middle two numbers find their simple arithmetic mean that will give you the median what is mode mode measures the most popular element in a set of data there could just be one number which appears with the maximum frequency then that will be the only mode if more than one number appears with maximum frequency all of those numbers will end up being the modes what kind of a data set will have no mode the data set in which all elements are distinct all of them appear only once such a data set is one which will have no mode is the quant section of the gre examination sign up for the most comprehensive and affordable online quant course for the gre at online.visaco.com i'll repeat it it's online.visaco.com to check out the related videos and remember to subscribe to this channel